Thank you so much for joining us today. I am so honored to be in the presence of the legendary Mr. Ellis Farrell, also known as l Dog, a legend in the Philadelphia community. Thank you, l Dog, so much for your time today. It is truly an honor to be graced with your presence, with your wisdom, and also your time. So thank you so much. And my pleasure. You're welcome. So, where are you right now? In Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in my house. <laughs> what I want to know from you is, who is L Dog? Tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're from, who is your kin, where are they from? Tell me a little bit more about you. Okay, uh, my name is Ellis Farrell, L Dog. I'm from, I um, probably could tell, I'm from Tallahassee, Florida. I'm a Floridian, a native of uh, Floridian. My grandmother raised me, and she would make you know the Southerners are the grandmother. They don't want they don't if you don't want to go to school, she don't make you go to school. And so I moved to Philadelphia with my mom and pop to uh, so I can get an education. So I went to school, and then I got out, finished school, went to the army, and then I came back and. Got into horse. Well, I always loved horses when I was in in Florida. And but my grandmother, she wouldn't buy me a horse. I always wanted a horse when I was a kid. She said she wasn't buying nothing that she couldn't eat. So I said, well, whenever I get grown, I'm gonna buy me a horse. And when I got out of school, went to the army, did that, got a job. I ended up with 23 horses. And I always loved. Kids, I always liked it working with kids because when, I, you know, I, I don't know what it was. I just liked it working with kids. And I came here, I mean, when I got out of the army and bought horses, man, I had a whole bunch of kids. I, I raised kids from, they're in their 40s now. Mm. And so I just kept going with kids, just kept going with kids. It kept a lot of kids out of trouble because there was nothing for them to do. And I just wanted to keep doing it. I was raised up in this community, right around the corner from where I am with my horses. The whole Strawberry Mansion, the community. But I have kids coming here from all over Philadelphia. They catch the bus to get the parents to drop them off from as far as, uh, I don't know, it's about eight, eight to 10 miles away. Mm. They all come here. It started how they was doing me, like started out how they was following me and found me. They uh like see we used to ride in the street. And and uh kids would see us with horses and they would follow us and follow us back to the stable <laughs> on bicycles, uh running behind us. And that's how we got kids start coming and the word to mouth that yeah, yeah, let's go out and know where some horses are and they start coming and then we moved to uh another part of philadelphia and they followed me there and we I just kept going it's said wherever i went in the community of Phil well the whole philadelphia is a community to me because mm -hmm. i had kids from all over south philly west philly uh Northeast, Hermantown, we had kids from all over. Mm. And uh, I had some now, They, well, like I said, they're in their 40s. And some wanted to be, uh, we have one that turned out to be a jockey. He works, he, he's a jockey. He had got his license. Now he's uh, at Parks Racetrack. Mm. Uh, had some, the one of, was drafted by Oakland Raiders to play football without a temple. Uh, he was a professional football player. I got had cops. I still got one that one that's a Philadelphia policeman. And now I'm got I have a new group. And I hope they can grow up. I can hope I can keep them out of trouble and give them something to do. But horses that you know they they you have to learn to respect the horses. And uh, you respect the horse, and you respect yourself, and you that's respect right. your elders. That's right. You, you, uh, and that's a big thing. I tell them they have to respect the elders, which they should do anyway. 
That's right. And uh, it's responsibility. The horses are a responsibility. They are, you know, you, you learn responsibility, but it's, it's hard to get these kids nowadays to the responsibility. But <laughs> it's uh, a different era. Yes, that's that's what it is. They they are well, a lot of them now. They they are young, and they don't have the experience that like the kids back and uh, the generation before them and the generation before them. I would attest to uh, the distractions now that we hit, we have. We didn't have social media. We didn't have cell phones. We was playing outside. I grew up playing outside in the dirt, and yes. uh, so I think that that's a big part of. Uh, where this culture has gone with our children, unfortunately. It's all, it's all phone, uh, phones, iPhones. I, I'm still uh, uh, not I'm a computer literate because I don't know nothing about these phones and that like I'm on now. What's this, a, a laptop? I don't know nothing about this stuff. <laughs> Well, you know what? That the generation sprung up really fast. The technological generation just came out of nowhere, and in the process, they didn't do a lot of transitioning of uh, the community. They just kind of passed it on to the younger generation for them to understand. I'm 41 years old. I don't be knowing what the heck to do, and I have a background in IT, so I understand. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Cause I, my, my great grandkids, my grandkids, they. They, they do all this, this, this computer stuff and these phones and stuff. They have to show me, but they get mad because I say, I can't comprehend that. I don't understand. <laughs> too bad. They, well, all you got to do is do this, 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 and this. I said, yeah, it's but in their how, nature. How, how can mm -hmm. I do that? So they be just moving the fingers. I can't do it. <laughs> it's kind of like what fishing was for, you know, maybe your generation and even my generation. People know how to fish and you teach somebody to fish and they like, well, how you do this? And you just like, you may just do this, this and that. It's, it's a similar, I, I say it's a similar kind of take. They replaced the fishing poles with iPhones. <laughs> you, can use your, you used to use your brain, but you don't now because I, I can't remember nobody's phone number. I, 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 I phone. You gotta look in the phone. You gotta look it up. <laughs> Look it up. And we had to memorize true. all the phone numbers. Have to you memorize. Know. <laughs> these, well, these kids, they can these kids nowadays they 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 can remember your number, but and they still can look in the phone and get it. That's right. And mm -hmm. but, uh, you say uh, your generation. I'm 85. <laughs> yesterday is my birthday. I'm 85 years old. Happy birthday. I saw what the community did for you on your birthday. They showed out and showed up. That was beautiful. Happy that, birthday. That, that was the best birthday I've done. That was even better than last year. We had, man, a so look like everybody that I ever had contact with just about was there. Mm, and people so that beautiful. I didn't know. Yes, people I didn't even know. And then people come, I had people from uh, Colombia. Mm. They started the movie Concrete Cowboy, and I guess they, I guess they saw it on on on, on uh, Facebook or whatever. And they said, but I had to come meet you. I heard that. And I got, I said, you gotta give me, you gotta take a picture with me. <laughs> That's a blessing. Look at you, you a celebrity. How does it All feel to be a celebrity? Oh, I don't. I don't consider myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you still out there in the dirt, huh? Did nothing yes, change. You still out there with those kids, them horses, yeah, I, muck and stall. Well, actually, I'm known all over the world. Mm. I, I people from all over the world, all, especially the United States. People, I, people come here from every, just about every state in the union to come to meet me. I've had people come from Australia, now Colombia, uh, France, uh, Korea, I think it was South Korea, and Japan. They got they they even put the they had a book out. We had a book out called Fletcher Street. They mm -hmm. put it out in, in Japanese. What? And, and they, they put it out in Japanese. <laughs> and well, the book now you can't. It's, it's I think it's out of print. It was hard to get. We made mm -hmm. what's that? Bond, uh, Bonds and Noble. Mm -hmm. I think we made well, the the number one on Bonds and Noble. 
Yeah, they need to re-release that. I have a few questions for you, you know, just to, more, just to learn more about you. Um, because, yeah, the, a lot of people do know you, but there are so many others who haven't really heard your story. I wanted to go back to your family. Were there any farmers or livestock owners in your family? What brought on this love for horses for you? Well, in, in town of Hester, Florida, we grew everything we ate. Mm. And we had to have horses and oxen pulling the, 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 the cultivate the land. We uh, used, uh, my grandmother had an ox that she uh, used pull the wagon. And uh, that's, that was our transportation up and down the highway. My grandmother used to go and work do uh, housework for for the people, white people down in, in uh, Florida, and that's what we did. But we, well, it's not farming, but we grew. Every, everybody, my family, immediate family, lived back in in, a, in one big circle, right? And and we uh, everybody had a garden. We planted uh, potatoes, sweet potatoes. With us. In Florida, he called them sweet. They called them sweet potatoes. What we call, we just said taters. That, that meant the sweet <laughs> potato. And if you said Irish potato, that meant the white potato. We like put it in the ground, like in in the uh, we like when we harvest it in the summer, we dig a hole and put the potatoes in the in the ground. We had a smokehouse. We killed pigs and smoked our meat. Uh, we that. Uh, Sugar cane grinders. Everybody would bring their at that certain time of the year. Everybody bring their sugar canes to one place, and they had ho uh, horses or oxen, mules, doing a circle, pulling the grinding the, the cane, and we cook it. And they'd be have a big that. That's a big thing we did down there back then. Have a great big kettle and make make the syrup. Uh, then we uh had to like we we did corn meal we would grow corn and then we take it to the everybody get together and take it to the the, the uh, corn the corn meal where they grind it up to meal and you know they make it the, the guy that, that does the that own the, the machine he gets some and then we get it that's how we paid for it mm. And I guess he sold his, put it in the bags and sold it so much a pound. Mm. And only thing that we really had to buy was salt and rice. We didn't grow rice. And everybody But everything kept, else, just about everything else you grew. Yes. My grandmother had the chickens, we had free range chickens. And that's what we did Sundays. We go out, kill a chicken to eat. For dinner, had mm. fresh uh, every Friday, every Saturday, we had a, a fish fry. But if people go fishing, and they bring it back, and like it uh, Saturday night, and we have bread. You get uh, they go buy some sunbeam bread, a wonder bread, big jar of mustard and hot sauce, and cook fish. Everybody sit around and cook fish. And tell my, the older people told lies. I said because I, I said it was all lies <laughs> from what what they said it was doing the things that they did. I said the uh, we just the kid young kids they'd be out playing playing hide and seek and stuff. But we grew everything and we it was like everybody just got together mm. and uh, put their stuff to, uh, like put it together and get it all like the grunt the cane the mill. And some places, some of them, they, they had grits. They ground to make grits. Mm. But uh, we, like, we did everything. We grew everything. And I never, never got, I know I was never sick till I come to fill up. And I was never wow. sick then. I got hit in the mouth with a, with a baseball bat because uh, I used to play baseball and I got hit and knocked my, Chip my teeth. That was the only time that I was really 
so you know had to cry because it was hurting mm. but other than that and right now i'm still still moving did did anyone carry on those traditions from your family farming no. No. okay now everything they go to the store to buy <laughs> I wow. Went, I, went, I went down there and uh, they had some people had a little garden, but it, it was never, never nothing. They they got up now down in Tallahassee, it's all malls and stuff now. They got all big malls and. And it was, ag it was more agricultural back then. It was more rural back then. Yes. We, we, like I said, everybody had a little farms so that had a little. Uh, God, everybody had a God someplace. Wow. So those farms have been replaced with malls and shopping centers. And, and, and houses. And houses. How, wow. Yeah. Every, so, everything. Don't even is... recognize it now when I go down there. I haven't been wow. since, since 2020, 2021. 2001. I, the last time I that's when I retired. That's the last time I was down there. Mm, wow. You moved to Philadelphia when you were younger and I'm sure that that was a culture shock from for you at that time um, back then how was that transition from for you moving from Florida and going into Pennsylvania uh it was uh the moving from Florida when I left there I was I was uh, I, don't, I think I was 14 15 and I swore I would never go back down there now I can't wait to get back down. I wanted, I wanted to move back down there, but I didn't have the down there. I didn't have the amount of kids that seemed to have problems. I, I don't know. I just even when mm. I was in the army, the weakest person I would always stick up for. Mm. And uh, then when that just then when I came to Philadelphia. I was always a loner. I, I wasn't around a lot of people. And then I had my cousins. When I go to school, I, you know, I went to school with them. So and then I just always, I don't know, I just always wanted to help the, the little guy, the, the weak guy. Mm. And that's, uh, you know, down there was real quiet. And I come to Philadelphia, man, it was like in Florida, when the sun go down, we had to, we had to go in the house. We was in the bed. <laughs> I come up here, man. We sit out till one o'clock at night. Mm. Just a lot of noise, and that's the man. That that was right down my alley. Was, you know, a lot of noise, but I was always by myself. And then I learned mm. how to drive. And my my father had a new car. Man, I'll be driving around in a new car by myself. And there was a lot, you know, like a lot of the guys envied me because I had to drive in a new car. <laughs> but I was always by myself. When I got a job and started working, and then I started buying, I first, uh, all my nieces and nephews, they got together on a Christmas. They took their Christmas money and I put what they didn't have. We bought our first pony. I used to bring her from, I would be out in the, in the suburbs where I had her at. And I bring her like on the weekend and stuff. I bring them, bring it, bring his pony down to Philadelphia. And then I went and bought another horse for my birthday. Then I bought another horse. Then I bought another horse and I was always teaching kids how to ride like I was up mm. in the in the northeast and I was teaching kids how to ride up there uh, it was mostly the white kids because I was in the white area and I was helping mm. I helped a lot of uh, kids that had uh, problems like uh, whatever you know like I don't know all these different diseases uh, Things that these kids have, the hyper kids, kids like had polio, they couldn't walk. Mm. I, just kept, I just taught them all how to ride. 
and uh I had people come up put up on on uh Facebook that I didn't even know who they was. I, it's been so long I forgot them. And they said, you don't remember me, but you taught me, you changed my life. You know, different people tell me that I changed their lives because I taught them how to ride and being with horses is like a therapy. And it's a therapy for me. So I don't care how many horses I have. If I, I say if I can feed one, I can feed two. If I can feed two, I can feed five. That's right. That's and, right. And that's just the way I've been. Mm-hmm. All my life, wow. I mean, well, might as well say all my life because I always, yeah. from young up until now. So you, yeah. so you started uh, Fletcher Street Urban Riding Club. How has your organization evolved over these years? Well, when when I started it, well, we, it was always horses. We had horses on. It was horses on Fletcher Street, and mm-hmm. horses. We had another uh, uh, stable down in another area of Philadelphia. And I moved back to Fletcher Street and it was always horses. And we never had, just everybody for themselves, everybody individual. And in in, uh, 2004, we had uh, got together. I said, well, why don't we just start a a riding club? Let's let's all get together and start a riding club. I used to go in the Northeast, I used to go camping and I was the only black up there. Hmm. And one, it was one black and one Puerto Rican. And uh, we used to go camping all the time, at least two or three times a, a year we go camping. And we did a lot of riding. And so when I come down to move into back to, to North Philly in uh, 2004, I said, let's get together and form a club. So we did the club, we formed the club and I was voted president. And then we uh then we said, well, we gotta pay dues. And we like they said, okay, we twenty dollars a month of dues. And they all quit. Mm. So me and my grandson, we kept it going. And to this day, where we got the like all the kids, we started getting more kids, more and more kids. And then with me, I didn't, you know, I was just all about helping the kids and riding club. But then now it's in, uh, how would you say, evolved around, now it's complicated. Mm. Because uh, we had, uh, uh, they did the book, Late, you know, we was out riding, and the lady followed us. She followed us, taking pictures, and then she came, followed us back to the stable, and that's when she did the book, Fletcher Street. And then I just started getting more and more and more uh, recognition with the kids and stuff, but I still was by myself, me mm. and my grandma. And, and then some of the guys that was in the club when we first started, because we had started out with 54 people, mm. but none of them wanted to pay dues. So they all, all but a couple quit. Really all of them quit. And was left on me. And so I kept it going. And it just kept bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. One lady from California, from uh, St. Bernardino, I think it was, it was something out there, St. Bernardina, uh, mm-hmm. something that she she, she started uh, communicating with me. And uh, then she said, why don't you start a, a get a 501c3? Mm. And she, she put up the money for me to get a 501c3. And we had to have a board and all that stuff. And that, that's when I said this, this got too complicated because I'm they start telling me, oh, you should have a paper trail. I'm not worried about all I'm worried about <laughs> is making sure the kids have something to do. And on That's the right. weekend, on the, when they're out of school, every day we have 15, sometimes 20 kids here uh, all day long. They don't want to leave. I, so I have to sit out there till <laughs> 8, 9 o'clock till they decide they got to go home. <laughs> Then on the, now when they're in school, 
I got to what you know they 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 come around after school and uh they're back on the weekends. We have we might have seven, eight kids helping clean the stalls and stuff. But it just got too it's too complicated, man. It's just uh everything is paperwork and good thing yeah. the NAVs and the people on the board, they're the one that's doing all the paperwork and keeping all mm-hmm. everything going. I can't do it because I don't know how to do this this computer stuff. Yeah, I mean, they did make things a little bit more complicated, and a lot of that red tape comes with the documentation that they require you to complete for your business now. When you're just yeah. out here, you know, trying to do positive things for the community, there's a lot of red tape around that. So yeah. um, it's good to hear that you have good people around you that are helping you along the way. Because, yep. I mean, even with, you know, younger organizations, that is a challenge for them, just getting through all the documentation and having people to help them navigate that process when all they want to do is serve the community. It's unfortunate. And, you know, and that ties me back to one of the stories that, you know, I saw from the movie. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit. But what a lot of people don't understand is how, with black organization, black black on barns or black cowboys, black horsemen, a lot of us are targeted by um, just people that don't agree with what we're doing. They don't want to see black people on horses, so they call the animal patrol, or okay. you know, they call people out and try to get us reported, and they try to get our horses taken away from us. Can you exactly. talk about any situation like that that has happened with you? Um, where, you know, you were at risk at lose, of losing um, horses from your organization or just your organization in general? Uh, oh, I was in a whole lot of situations here with the, uh, at the SP, what we call it, the SPCA, the, that's the animal people. Well, I was at one stable and they just constantly was uh, on my case. Oh, they took about eight horses from me, mm. yeah, but they had to give them. They had to give them back. Thank God, because they were well, number one where I was at. The guy that I was renting the building from, he owed taxes, back taxes. Wow! And he could have given it, given donated to the the property. He could have donated it to us, but he didn't. And so they came down and they, they went in, they climbed the fence and went in and took pictures of the wintertime, took pictures of the water, uh, like where we take the water and, and if, if the water would freeze. So we just take it, knock it out the bucket and leave it on, on the ground, give them fresh water. And they went in one evening but they didn't. They didn't. Uh, they didn't put it where they had fresh water. So we, before we leave, we give them fresh water. But they took a picture of the ice. And they, we went to court. They took me to court, and the judge. They would had the pictures, and they tried to use that. But the judge told them, "Say you can't." Say how'd you get them? Mm. Well, we, we climbed the fence. He said, "Oh, well, that's the lead. You can't use these pictures." <laughs> they had to pull all those pictures out. And we went back. Well, the guy that they, they was the city was taking the prop, property. So the judge told him, said, "Well, you got said if you take the horses, you got to be responsible for the rent wherever you take them at." But they took them to a place called Ryer's Farm. They took them there, and they said that he you you got to pay for them for sixty days. It cost him over twenty thousand dollars for me, so, and he and he said, and he had full <laughs> access to his horses, and the, the vet bill, everything you got to take care of was for two months. And if he want to stay there, you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to split it. You're gonna have to. Uh, he gonna pay. You pay half, and he pay half. They didn't expect me to come get my horses. Mm. So my day was up. I was there with trailers. And they didn't want to give them to me. Talking about, they didn't, they didn't think I was coming. And they was telling me, 
Well, we got to uh, we got to call the SPCA. I said you don't have to. I said here's the order, judge's order right here. And they said, okay, now they called me, tell me, well, where are you going to take me? I said, I don't know. I might take have some put down. I might take some to Jersey. I miss, might, might, no, I don't know where I'm going to do it. But they had to give me every one of them back. And they, they couldn't mess with me then. And then again, they had a, a lady going around, going in the store. She came in. I was on Fletcher Street then. She came in. I had a young horse. <laughs> and he was he was a, a young two year old stud, and he would like play in the water and turn the water over once he drank all the water he wanted. And she came in came in one day, early one morning, before I got there, and she went she went they, they, you know so she went in the barn without being invited, and she uh. They told her what the horse does because he he do it every night because we had a, I had a big big tub for him for water. Very common came, for horses to do that. Yeah, <laughs> and she came in and wrote that and told him said, "Well, tell him he got to fix it so the horse won't turn the water over." And she left, <laughs> and she came back with a, a court order, a, a, a search warrant, the, to take the horses. The two I had two horses. And on, on the under the premise that the horse didn't have an, an uh, enough water because he was knocking the water over because the horse was knocking the water over because right. they, they yeah. like kids they like to do stuff like that yeah and and, and we clean the stalls we clean the stall every morning first thing in the morning we clean the stall me and my grandson and uh, she she went she left and came back but when she came back the stall was clean she had a search warrant. Would not show me the search warrant, and she took, and uh, well, man, we went to court for a long time, and she took, she took, she, took, she walked past the two horses. The horse was standing outside on the wall, and she walked right past. Him. She didn't even know him, and she walked right past him and went in there. Wouldn't show me the search warrant, and I said, "Well, there's a horse is right there." She went back there, and the stalls were clean, but she mm. still took the horses. And she had they had to give the horses back, and the, uh, the, the, so they had to get the horses back. When they brought the horses back, we didn't even know the horses. They had lost so much weight. They oh looked, they looked my terrible. god! And and so they had to give the horses back. So we took in uh, they took a pony back, took a pony from us, and uh, they had they took the pony up and the vet check and said. There's nothing wrong with these horses. You gotta get, you gotta give them back. You gotta get a pony back. But they didn't put that in. The, they didn't write that up. So we uh, they had everything they did against me. They lost, and they they had to keep giving my horses back. <clears throat> so so now they don't even. Uh, the last time they was there, they were talking about I built a stall for my horse. On my property, because we had the the property was was donated, to the club. and they thought that thought we was uh like squatting, thought we were just building up a stall, putting horses on a bacon lot, and you gonna tell me they said, said no, we gonna take this horse, and we can't let you put a horse on it because you uh if you put one on, then everybody else gonna put one on. I said, no, they're not going to put nothing on him because I own the property. He was shocked. He couldn't say nothing. He just, he just stood there looking at me. You own the property? I said, yes. And they, they, didn't, they, uh, they didn't come back no more after that. They didn't come back since then. Because they, they, every, they just kept coming. And every time they came, I had something for them. And they keep they kept losing. Why do you think that they kept targeting you? Because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't uh, bite my tongue. I told them about what I told them the way I thought. I told them there was a bunch of. Uh, uh, I told them there was a bunch of. I don't know. You might have to uh, delete that because I told them there was a bunch of assholes. <laughs> didn't, didn't know nothing. 
And so everything they did, every time it like you don't know anything, you, you don't know nothing, you're just going by the book. I said, You gotta use common sense. Mm-hmm. And so they just I guess they just just said, Well, this guy always got something for us, so we might as well leave him alone. Mm-hmm. And then we own the property. So they uh then we got these guys, some people that they just want they're envious. They envy me because I I've come so far when they could have all been part of it. And they said we got some that's negative. They most people always doing stuff positive, and we got a couple that's that uh, always have something negative to say about us. Mm. But we keep going. We keep uh, we keep growing, and and. The more it is that the, you know, the more we go, the better the better the things are. And we got some that uh, like we have Halloween. We have we have a community of uh, have the yard full of kids. Uh, Christmas, uh, uh, any any holiday, Fourth of July, anything that we get uh, get the kids there there. And we have, we always have, and none of the, the, these negative people uh, support us. You know, they don't come, but, but the, the people in the community come. That's good. And they want us here. That's because right. They said, they said that they can come, they, if their kids, all they got to do, the kids, all they have to do is go tell them, say, I'm going, uh, can I go someplace, such and such a place with Eldor? And their parents, right away. You good. They, they don't even worry about it because they'd be, be gone. That's and, beautiful. Yeah, we go to the auctions, like the horse auction when they have a holiday. Yeah. We go have a, a truck, a, a, a car load of kids, take them up to the horse auction. And we have a a, a buffet at the horse, up, you know, up there where we do in Lancaster County mm-hmm. or Shady Maples. That's one. That's the largest buffet on the East Coast, and we go there, and the kids just have they just have a blast. Mm. They, but the parents, they they go. They say they go with me wherever we go. Like on sometimes on a Saturday night, we go to an auction. What time y'all gonna be back? Well, I don't know. Whatever time is over with. Mm. You with L dog? You good? Wow. So you are like that father that uncle, that grandfather, and that friend that a lot of people just don't have in their lives and they really truly need outside of you being so connected to horses, which is a unique thing for, you know, someone in the community of Philadelphia to be doing. Outside of that, just the overall nature of you and who you are, these kids are just genuinely connected to you and their families trust you to care for their kids. That's exactly. Beautiful. Yes, and and I just uh, like, I, like you said, I'm like a, a, a father figure to them. They all they they all call me unk. Uh, uh, they, they introduce me to everybody. They introduce to this is my grandfather. <laughs> so I got a lot of grandkids. <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> that's that's, uh, that's the, what the community needs. I, yes, I, I, I'm I'm just so grateful for you. Because um, your type, you know, this is what I grew up in. I, I was I was raised by men, and um, I grew up in a, a community that was male dominant. So I understand the importance of positive male influences in your life. So I am just really grateful that you are doing what you're doing, especially in such a challenging area that is uh, Philadelphia. So yes, um, that's 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 amazing. And, you know, on that, you know, Philly has a reputation of being one of the roughest cities in America. How do you push through those barriers with your programs? Oh, all that's all, all that's that that that's not all that's not true. Mm. It's not the roughest city. It's not the roughest city. Uh, it uh, it's. Like you got uh, a lot of people, a lot of uh, young men that had nothing to do when they were growing up. 
and they, they are they out there shooting the, the over the territory. You know, they, they, they this is this corner. Well, I'm gonna take this corner, but that's nothing compared to, to a lot of places. And, that. Uh, <laughs> and it's a, a lot of them. It's, it, I, I, it's well, let's just put it this way: in the area like where I where I am, it's North Philly. Uh, you got South Philly. We got kids from South Philly that comes up here from South Philly. You got kids from the Northeast. They come here. Uh, they, they got a lot of, of different the sections of Philadelphia. They, they are here, come here to Fletcher Street. Mm. You got the guys that grew up the generation before this one and then the generation before that one they all come back like they're here on the on on during the week they stop come past the check and sit and, and talk about old old days talk about the olden days because we you know i used to buy a lot of horses and we used to did, do a lot of uh racing and we all I always bought rescued thoroughbreds. I might as well say rescued them because I buy them, they be down, and uh, I know where they're going. They're going to the glue factory. They're going to the glue factory. And I would buy them. The kids, they always come to me because I was driving truck one time. I was doing all right. And we'd go back, we'd go to, to the auction, and they'd come running to me. Come on, just look at this horse over here. I'm going to show you a horse. And I said, well, get the number and, and, and bid on it when it come through. Now they get that horse and they get it home, get it back to the stable and they take care of it. And after a couple of weeks, everybody, oh, my horse is faster than yours. No, my <laughs> horse is faster than yours. All right, let's go. We get to the <laughs> park and they line up and run. And this is, what, this is what I did. That's how I ended up with 23 horses. I had mm. a bunch of kids. And I always picked good horses. And all the kids, there was a lot of stables at one time in Philadelphia. And they would always, all of them come at me, and then most of them got beat. Because I always, <laughs> where I train my horses, they tell me I'm doing it wrong, but yet still I'm winning. Come on. And so, they, uh, you know, it's always somebody got something to say. <laughs> yeah, they, well, they be talking with the talking trash with the kids because I don't believe in talking. I, 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 I heard it, that. They like they, they be bragging about this horse and that horse and who did what. But yet, still, at the end of the day, they always come and tell you know, El Dog, you know how to pick good horses. It's just that I pick them, the horses I get, I just take them and, and, and feed them and the, make sure the kids treat them right. And love them, and, and yeah, because we get horses. They don't like uh, get them from. They, they they sell them from the track. They don't even. Mm -hmm. eat, they don't know how to abuse. Eat. Yeah, they don't know how. They don't eat app. They're not fed with apples and carrots and stuff like that. They're not treated nice. Mm -hmm. But these kids, they end up making them eat. You know, giving them apples and carrots and stuff. I say one horse that my vet. You probably never heard of Devin Horse Show. That's a big horse show here in, in, in uh, Pennsylvania. And uh, that's where all the rich people go. Okay. They're, they're jumping and stuff. They're hunting, hunting and jumping and okay. stuff. Okay. The English side of things. Yeah. And I hold, I had a, I saved the horse. The horse couldn't even hold his head up. And I, I, I bought it and bought it back. And I called the vet. And he came out and, and checked. He said, well, if it's standing up in the morning, He'll be all right. And come that morning, he was the horse was still standing. He gave him shots and stuff. And we had a 40-pound bag of carrots. That horse ate the whole bag of carrots. <laughs> and that's what we named the horse. We, we named them carrots. And, and the vet said, if you ever wanted, if you ever want to sell this horse, let me know. Because this is mm. what my, my wife wanted, like a horse like this. And I sold him the horse. And he went to Devon Horse Show, and he was went. He won. He won, I guess he was winning because he, he, I never heard. He, he, you know, he was happy with his wife. Was happy with him. Mm-hmm. But 
Let's just show you we saved him from you know saving for one, and he made it to Devin Horseshoe. That's that's he made it. That was big time. Wow. And, and, but let's just show you. Boy, I bomb when they reel down. Mm -hmm. Good care of and we're right now all the horses the vet. We just had the vet out there and they checked all our horses. We I think we got sixteen. And they said, said we feed them. They got them. They need. He said, "All need to go on diet." They, they said it too fat. <laughs> they get fat. <laughs> yeah, they I know they well fed. All them kids. That's all the kids want to do is feed a horse, yeah, and well, then the horses just eat it up. <laughs> we had the people. Well, the people in the community. Yeah. They go get a bag of apples. They get bring a drop off a bag of apples, a bag of carrots. Yeah. And they come there and give it to the kids to feed the horses. Mm, that's beautiful. And, and uh, before where, where we are now, they took our turnout where we had to turn the horses out. They put up apartment buildings in there now. Oh, talk about but, it. Yeah, we had when we had that before they built in it. We have a big fence, like a, a, a four block square, and we had everybody. They lined up, be lined up. Back in the afternoons, in the evening, when the kids get out of school, cars lined up and the horses started going to the fence because they know what they're going to get. They've been fed apples and carrots. The, <laughs> cops, they, the cops bring, they bring carrots and stuff <laughs> that they feed them. And that's what we, them horses, every day, they would head to the, to the other side of the fence because mm. they know what's coming, the apples and carrots. And it's just... Just like that, what you said, like it's really changed compared to, but now we got kids now, they, they're not too uh, horse, uh, they, don't, they, they don't, they're not that good horse sense. They don't have the, that horse sense because they're all young. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's back, back in the day, there wasn't as many cars. Now that there's a million cars on the streets. Mm -hmm. And they care nothing of horses. Or bicycles, they will hit them and keep they going. Mm -hmm. Keep up. And uh, we just had a horse. <laughs> he went that, that he went viral. He went he, he worldwide known worldwide. We called ninety five. <laughs> when drivers saw the horse on the highway, they called police. State police and Philadelphia police quickly responded. I don't know if he, well, they should have been on out there too. He made the uh, what was that Facebook, what Instagram. <laughs> He made everything running down 95. He reboarded him Monday and he got out Monday night. <laughs> he got me up five uh, five thirty in the morning. Oh was, Lord! Is there anything you can tell us about the horse? No, we just bought. The, you, did you get yours? You got. Yeah. You got. Okay. It, did she seem okay? Or is he? I'm not sure. Yeah, he's all right. He's all right. You heard yeah. horse gonna be okay, sir. Yep. How y'all gonna make sure it doesn't get out again? Uh, Do we know how it got out again? Uh, somebody let him out. So I had to go down, ride about 10 miles down 95 mm. to get this horse. How you catch him? The state police caught him. Oh, shoot. <laughs> He was on the run. And there is Seabiscuit there running along I-95. State North police and Philadelphia police quickly responded, eventually corralling the horse on Westmoreland Street in Port Richmond. I just got off the phone with State. They have the horse trapped, not in custody. And the, the, the state police put up a, 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 some kind of rope on him. He said, that's my, my, my leash. And said, "Up my handcuffs." I said, "Damn, you got him in handcuffs." Oh, that was a black horse. Heard from Fletcher Street Urban Riding Club. He said they just bought this horse. They loaded him into the trailer and then drove away. Oh yeah, my he, God! He bust out and started laughing. <laughs> but he was running down 95, and and that's what we had. We, the kids picked the name for him. We had the kids had a, 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 a naming ceremony. We had uh, had nine, 95 North. And uh, freeway. <laughs> the, 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 the name came up. We won. He the, the, the freeway won. Wow. So I, call him, I call him 95 North Freeway. 95 North Freeway. That's a great name. <laughs> it's, it's, anything can happen in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. That's uh, a show. He, 
Yeah, he didn't, oh man, he everywhere we go, we had him on on the news, we took him to the, they took pictures of him at the news, took him down to, to the news channel, the station. Oh, he a star now. Yes, he <laughs> is. <laughs> I yeah. heard that. He hit, the, he literally hit the ground running. Yes, you know? he is. <laughs> exactly what he did. <laughs> That's heck of funny. Get rid of them because that's all that everybody come back. I want to see, I want to see 95. Where he got to 95. And my grandson and I, everywhere we go. Oh, you a celebrity now, huh? You run to you're running on 95. And my grandson, they 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 call him 95. Every time somebody see him, they say, Oh, you celebrity, you on 95 with the horse, huh? <laughs> But, wow. Uh, he's known, well, we are known now, real big. And uh, man, I, 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 like you said, I'm, I don't want to be a celebrity, but everybody want me to, like, just to come. I'm going to different places speaking. All they want to know is about that 95 horse. <laughs> <laughs> I, I that is too to funny. Yeah, I walk in, they, they, they start talking, yeah, that's, that's the one that got 95, the horse on 95. Said, yeah, huh. that's me. Go to the horse huh. auction. Yeah, go to the you horse bought auction. him at a horse auction? Yeah, he bought him Monday. Wow. He bought him that Monday and he got out Monday can, night. Can you share how much you paid for him at that auction? They paid 1500 $1,500. Now yeah. I know that that horse is worth it. How what kind of horse is it? It called it's called a Dutch harness horse. Mm. Oh, he be, I'm good. Oh, people been wanting to buy him. I know they want to buy him. him. We can't get rid of him. <laughs> he's, he's a star. He's, yeah, he's he's a part of the stable now. That's it. That's that's your baby now. Yeah, yeah. y'all y'all hold on to that little star right there. That's a, that's a heck of a story. I did want to talk to you about Concrete Cowboys. Now, the movie Concrete Cowboys was based on your organization along with other cowboys in the Philly area. Is that correct? No, it's the, that, that's uh, it, uh, well, it's a long story. Okay. Uh, a guy, I think he's from California. He came and he interviewed me. And he did a, it's a book called, he, he wrote a, a fictional book called Ghetto Cowboys. And uh, he, 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 uh, he sold the book to a movie company here in Philadelphia. And when they changed it, you know, they changed it around, they did like, they changed it to Concrete Cowboys. And they had uh, some people in it from the Philadelphia area and with, uh, what's his name? Evis Elber, how you call him? Idris. <laughs> yeah, he, he was the star. And, and a guy called, what's his name, Meth Man? Meth Man. Had, <laughs> yeah, him, they had uh, three movie stars that I know of. Okay. And, and the rest of them was like from people from the community. Or that had been on Fletcher Street at one time. And guess what? Mm -hmm. I wasn't in it. And something I, I, I saw parts of the movie, but uh, they, they say that they did give me some kind of credit. I don't, it's not, my name is not on there. Your name is in the book. The what? author gives you credit in the book that he wrote. Yeah, I, I don't know, but I, I had nothing to do with that. Wow. That, Interesting. That, that, yeah, they, they, you know, they didn't want me in it. So actually, <laughs> the, the people that from the that was was from Fletcher Street, they 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 didn't want me in it, and I don't know why. And not, not the guy that the, the, I don't know, he was a producer. Not, uh, what's the name? He's a black guy, a director. Um, I don't know his name, but anyway, one of them came to me and uh, he said, "What? Aren't you in the movie?" I, I said, "No." Mm. He said, "Well, I'm gonna see if I can't get the part, get you a part in there." 
and he went, I guess he talked to him and they, they didn't, they, they, I, he never came back. He never got back with me. Wow. But isn't the story, because when I was researching that and connecting your stables, isn't the story loosely based off of your organization? Yes. Mm. But that, 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 that's what was, well, see, they had, uh, it was, it's, it was really screwed up because they were trying to, that we have a, a, a Fletcher Street Urban Riding Club. So they tried okay. to come in at which they did start another club. Okay, I've seen them. Okay, now, I don't, they was trying to like put it all together with Fletcher Street Urban Riding Club. And people were thinking that I was double dipping. I said, that movie had nothing to do with me because everybody in the movie got together and formed this club. Wow. And I said, no, I have nothing to do with that, that club. And they said, well, okay, now we understand. Wow, I'm that. glad you cleared that up because, you know, first of all, people don't know that there are so many black cowboys just in the United States in general. And in Philadelphia, there are. And outside of that, there are a lot of saddle club organizations and other horsemanship organizations. And just because they see that one face, you know, your face, they associate you with all, especially yeah, in Philly yeah. being not necessarily known for having horses. So yeah, they, painted, they painted the whole thing with one brush. They painted the, the paint the whole wow. world with one brush. This is why I tell people. Do not let Google be your source of research. Ask questions, go to the source and understand the real story. Because if you go through the internet and videos, they done create, they done put you all through this movie. And you didn't have nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. Nothing <laughs> ever to do with it. Dang. And I have never stopped trying. And, mm. and every and it's always it's always come out good for me because they everybody come and says you deserve it. You know it's a good thing you deserve it, and it's just uh, I keep going. That's and that, right. You know, and and they are not going to pull me down. It's a couple that always have something negative to say about us on Facebook, but we still going and people get on them there's two two different clubs three with my club and then there's two more that's using Fletcher Street name all trying to get that recognition because of Fletcher Street Urban Riding Club wow interesting so the real story comes out and this yes. is you know one of the most unfortunate things about this culture and this this community is the separation amongst us and the competitive nature when we all you know well i would assume the reason behind us starting these organizations is for the community but you know some people look at it for monetary gain a lot of people look at it for recognition and and to be a celebrity but um you know of course the reason why you have been unscathed i mean i'm yeah i know you've had your challenges but the reason why you're still here is because purely you are doing this for the community. Yes, I don't want to be no. I'm not. I'm. I'm, I'm not looking for a monetary gain. Gain. I'm not looking for for no recognition. No nothing. All I want to do is help the community. Help the kids in the community. But I help yeah. anybody. I don't, I don't care who it is. I have grown people that say I want to learn how to ride. I say come on down. Come on down. Just, That's just right. Come here. The best. Come on the weekends or call and let us know when you come. That's right. And they come, they get a ride, and they just the happiest thing in the you know, be, they, they they're just happy. <laughs> and and I'm coming back. You know, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of them come back and uh, some come back and some don't. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and but they always people bring their kids. Yeah. That, but that experience, and, I'm sure, sticks with them for life. You know. Yes, it does. It's, uh, uh, yeah, because like this Sunday when my, they had my celebration, I had, it was people that had once came past the stable, 
and they saw that on uh, social media, they, they were there. Mm. And said, oh, I'm coming back. It's just, I wasn't coming. This, it was cold. <laughs> Cause they like, it one... <laughs> they, it's they, cold. They, 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 they came out there, they were there. And I, man, that, that's when I said that was the best day. That was the best I could, that, that was great. Oh, that's so and beautiful. I didn't even know they had put it. I didn't, I, I didn't see it because I, like I said, I this social media thing. I don't. Uh, yeah, you, you be outside. You be but outside. let me ask you this. So on that note, how do you feel about photographers and major corporations that capitalize off of our culture and aren't necessarily compensating individuals for it, uh, or even giving the proper credit. They, that's, well, the whole thing is from day, from back in the day, uh, we, we were the, the, the headliners, we were the spotlight. We, the, the blacks were, the, all, they did everything, but they didn't get credit for it. They, they uh, you know, like this, one of the biggest races, the Kentucky Derby. It was black jockeys. Mm. And they started making money. <laughs> and you better sell them. You, it's, it, you hardly ever see a black jockey now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You hardly ever see a black jockey. Mm -hmm. and, and because it, they're making money. They don't mm. leave jockeys. They, 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 uh, 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 Filipinos, Puerto Ricans, Mexicans, Everything but blacks, and they are making millions. All these jockeys, they, they're millionaires because they're making all that money or, or out of with the, uh, you know, they the jockeys they they they, uh, they get a percentage of the uh, whatever the whole, the things you know, like these the, the Kentucky Derby here. That's that's million, a couple million dollars. That's money. Yeah, yeah. that's big money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're getting money from it. Kentucky Derby, the Belmont, the Preakness, mm. all that, all that's big money. And they're getting a percentage of it. And so that's how they become millionaires. But the, the and we can't, we can't, uh, we can't even uh, get into the thing because they, you know, there are no black jockeys, very few. Mm. And very few, you got uh, very few uh, 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 women. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been mm -hmm. long being black. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's this it's a it's a money thing and, and we're not getting recognition for it. And like uh we did like they come down that like we did a, a a commercial uh I don't know what what three years ago. Mm -hmm. About three years ago, we did. They came here and did a commercial. Where do you thought it? Where you think it ended up at? On the Super Bowl. <gasps> it can't make it. We had just did it, and it came up on that that, that that it was on the Super Bowl, and we we got nothing. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh. They come here, get all the interviews, and do all these movie shoots and uh, uh, whatever. And give up a couple of hours, and that's it. Look, on, I was wondering, do they pay you? Do they compensate you for your time? That not that much. Not that much. Uh, like one of one of the move, one of the commercials they did, I think they gave them. A, you know, they, they might they might give you five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. Get the you sign, get the people to sign up, sign the thing, release what they call release thing. And it sounds good. It sounds good to somebody in the hood. You know, you see a little check, five hundred dollars, thousand dollars. Oh, okay, that's cool. Until you realize <laughs> and you see it on the Super Bowl <laughs> and understand how much money that they're making off of you. Exactly. That's the slap in the face. Yes, that, 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 I've had that they did one. So I had a couple of them from like uh, overseas. They did one called. Uh, they did a, a a movie. I mean a, a musical video, and it went. Uh, I think it was what was it? Lots of love, some kind of love. This this British band, 
and they won, they got all kind of awards in their country for this 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 uh, commercial or, or video, whatever it was. And all they did is they probably cost, I bet it probably cost them three thousand mm. dollars because they get a guy five hundred dollars, something like that. And they was happy and talk, they were talking, man, they be talking about that. that, that <laughs> I mean, talking about this money that they got. Yeah. Back. And then they see where they got all these, this video come on the thing. And when you see it come on, on the, they show it on, on TV and stuff, that money, that, that video is making money. And you mm-hmm. only got $500 for it. Mm-hmm. For me, I'm, I'm, I, me, I don't, I'm not getting nothing. I just, just like, I, just, I don't know. I just, as long as I'm I'm doing something for the community and helping these kids, keeping them out of trouble, it doesn't make any difference to me. I heard that. And, and they always tell me, "Oh, you got to keep doing paper trails. You got to take do this and do that." Man, I don't care. As long as the kids, I don't need no paper trail. I can care less. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But but now, uh, uh but. Nas on with the board, we got to have a board and stuff, and everything comes up. You got to make sure this, make sure this is right, yeah. make sure that's right. And man, I, I could care less as long as these kids are, uh, uh, long, you know, as long as the kids are uh, uh, happy and, and uh, doing whatever they're gonna do. And uh, we have a lot of kids like they're real hyper. Always got that that this uh the tent span is real short. They can be doing one cleaning the stall, and next thing you know, they're out chasing each other wrestling. <laughs> got a basketball or football throwing it. And then you're supposed to be cleaning the stall. Oh, okay, I'm gonna do it. It's just but they are they are there. Mm-hmm. And they're like family because they, you know, they 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 play and look out for each other. Yes. And that's, well, that's like being responsible and respectful. That's right. So it gives them something to do. That's right. So um, what would be your advice for the younger generation of horsemen who are leaders in their community and educating their community on horsemanship, on uh, different forms of agriculture, what would be your advice to them? My advice would be, if you love horses, you can become a veterinarian. You can become a farmer. You can become a jockey. You can become like these uh, equestrian. Like, they got equestrians in the Olympics, which they're trying. They're trying to get get out, get horses out of the Olympics. Uh, you got all kind of different shows, like hunter jumper, like uh, uh, all kind of different things that they show that they have. They don't want you in it. You don't. You see very few dark faces in the in these shows. They don't want you in it. They do do everything they can to discourage you from being being a part of of, of being a part of it because you go in. You always be look like you always turn out to be the superstars. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they have a, a polo team here in Philadelphia, black polo team. They, I think they've been all over the world. They're champions. Become uh, they became champion polo players. That's a rich man's sport. sport. Mm-hmm. But these black kids start out at the. Uh, Oh, there's a place over in Shimonis in the park. We have a park out here called in Fairmount Park. They call Shimonis. They have a they, they they have a program called Work to Ride, and they started started a polo club over there. And the, the kid they became a, champ, a championship polo team. Mm. But there's a lot of stuff. My my advice is that. We have an agri- agricultural school here. We got a couple go there, and I'm trying to get, I try to get a lot of them to get their grades up because you got to have good grades. 
to go to this uh this school and it's an agricultural school school and they learn all about animals you know, my advice was for them to if you lack horses get into the field because it uh it's it's money you can make money in in, in uh and horsemanship and you can go you can get the uh, scholarships to go to you know veterinarian schools and stuff and i can I, I try to get get these kids i keep asking them you know what they want to do and they most of them now they want to be I asked them what they want to be. They want to be, uh, then change it to they want to be a veterinarian or something to do with working with horses. Mm-hmm. And most of them, they, they, they're getting a little bit too big for to be a jockey. You got to be small. <laughs> you got to be small. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we got one that says he started out scared to death of a horse. Now he's one of the better riders. And I don't know how how big he's gonna get, but he's pretty good. Got pretty good. See, he rides pretty good. Mm-hmm. And when he first started coming down, he was scared to death of a horse. Wouldn't get near that joke. Mm. And he got, he got a brother that he he been coming with him. But he's young, but he, he want to get into you know he's starting slowly cleaning stalls and rubbing the horse and stuff. So we gonna have him up on him too. Yeah, get him, get him up on the horses too. And his brother, he said he want to be a jockey. You know, they all of them they started out wanting to be this and that, but now they they all want to be something to do with the uh, animals. And, I said, and I'm going to keep keep pushing it. To be a vet, be a veterinarian. You can do, you can do small animals, horses, and there's money in that too. That's so right. I'm trying, to, I'm, I'm trying to get him to, to do, you know, get into that. Especially when you are traveling, that they make they make a killing. Yeah. Come you know, out, check on my horse, and just look at it, and it's hundred and seventy dollars. Like, what? What did you do? <laughs> yeah, it's more than that. <laughs> <laughs> they, they come and look at that joke, and they charge they charge you up. They send you a bill later, huh? You're like, wait a yeah. wait a minute. You just walked around the horse <laughs> for about five seconds and you mean to tell me. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. money in it, all right. <laughs> yeah, and, and we it, it's, we got the well, we got a a, a vet that he's um, I mean I might as well say our vet uh resident vet because Everything that's going on with that, he, he comes in and give him the shot. He, he, he keeps the, uh, he's a, the whole, our horse is on him. And if something happened to one, he, he, we call him, like they get a cut or something. He said, well, send me a picture of it. And that's one thing he do it. And he said, oh, no, he look at it. and said, no, all you got to do is do this and do that and, and just clean it. And uh, he, he'll tell us how to do it. And we do that, and it, that saves us money because you know he don't have to come out to do it or to show us how to do it. We can he just do, give it to us on the phone, mm-hmm. or if something is you know something real wrong. He'll send somebody out. He'll send a vet out, and uh, so we cool about that. No, uh, he know our horses are taking good care of. He because he know he takes good care of them. Bernie Mac, he said, uh, he told a joke. He was saying that you had uh, a white guy and a Chinese guy and a black guy. And the black guy, they they, the, the, they said Jesus Christ was down the, the road. And they said, the black guy walked up and said, I want to go to heaven. Say, how do I get to, uh, how do I get in heaven? And the white guy, they told him, said, well, God is right down there. Say, go down there. And uh, if you if you ask him something that he don't know, uh, you can get in. And and he went down and and he said, God said open the, open the door and let him in. So the, the white guy and the, the, the other guy said, "What did you say to him?" 
for him to let you in. He said, I asked him, when is black people going to stick together? That's how God just said, <laughs> That's I guess he said God didn't know, so he let him go to heaven. He, let him go to heaven. <laughs> he went to heaven because he said he couldn't ask him when black people gonna start sticking together. Mm. And mm. that's what we don't have that many. We got we have a lot of black, but they are all of them are old now. They most of them I think I'm just two less old than me. That's uh, still around. Yeah. But we all should get to get we have a strong thing here in philadelphia but it's so many different things and and everybody nobody wants us to come around their their their, their places they got they got uh this one stable uh in the park they have it out there in the park and they think that we want to come somebody from Fletcher oh they don't want nobody from Fletcher Street over there why well, can anybody want, from Fletcher Street want to go there Crazy. and they they don't participate in nothing we have but we always support them mm, and people keep come. on support yeah, that, 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 yeah. Keep on. because it's because it's people like me and it's people who are in the community that watch that you know um, and I appreciate and really value these organizations that just keep going despite the negative aspects of the, the culture. You know, one of the reasons why I started the directory, the Black Cowboy directory, was to really highlight the different organizations and saddle clubs um, and, have, and help people to find them. Um, what I noticed being in Georgia, being in Atlanta, Georgia, I was in a saddle club and a lot of the similar things happened. It was like the Bloods and the Crips. If you left this saddle club, went to that saddle club, y'all can't talk no more. Or if you went to go get lessons from this, this person in this saddle club, it's an issue in your saddle club. I'm just like, why we just can't, you didn't hear Rodney King? Rodney King asked why we can't all get along. I just want to say, you know, can we, can we all get along? Can we can we get along? Um, can we stop making it making it horrible for for the for the older people? In the the and it's, it's two thousand almost two thousand twenty five now. I mean, I know we just started two thousand twenty four, but we still funking. And we and, and and the thing is, see, I lived in uh, the area. I lived in Winco years, probably about ten years ago, and I had no idea that there were black cowboys in the Philadelphia area. I traveled through Philadelphia quite often, never came across black cowboys. So when I learned that you guys were there, and now I'm learning about the disconnect between the different organizations, it really saddens me because our community is so small and it just makes no sense as to why we just can't just get together and just have fun. I mean, at the end of the day, this lifestyle is very fun. You know, and, and what the, what divides us is our inner issues. You know, unfortunately, in the black community and what I've recognized, you know, especially from my family is it sometimes starts from our family, you know, breaking those generational curses because we have family members that just don't get along. And so that trickles out into our everyday life and it trickles out into our culture. So, yeah. you know, it's unfortunate to hear but I'm glad that you're speaking up about it because hopefully through the messages that you're putting out, the positive messages that you're putting out, people will just come to realize that at the end of the day, baby, it's all, it's only about community. You know, it's not about none of that other stuff. It's only about the uh, uplifting our community and just coming together as community members and having fun, you know, yes. and celebrating people, you know? Yeah. It's uh that's that's what I can't understand. We have uh, the whole community, even people from out his way, uh, come here to Flutter Street because they come here, they know they're gonna get the ride, and you know they're gonna have to clean some stalls. Mm -hmm. But they get the ride. But we have, like I said, about sixteen horses. And we have a, a thing that we come, they come and we have a, the, we have the street. Like we're going to give kids rides. We park a car on one end of the street, park a car on the other end of the street. 
and the kids ride up and down the street, or we have a, a, a we have a corral when it's not raining. We go out and take they go out in the corral and we turn them loose out in the corral, mm. and they have, they have a ball. Mm. This, this this ride 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 until they get tired, and then when they, <coughs> when they when I see them start coming back toward the stable, I know they're tired and they didn't have enough ride. Mm. <laughs> so see, that's what them. the community needs. That's that's so important. An outlet, you know, a very positive yeah. outlet, and then a connection back to nature because they're in these urban communities in these urban cities, and all they see is concrete everywhere, and you know, they don't see any farms, what you were used to seeing growing up. And that yeah. connection that you're able to provide to them is so crucial because I know for a fact, because it, it happened with me, you know, getting into the industry, I know for a fact that it will have a lasting impact on them. Um, yeah. So thank you for doing yeah, that. Be out um, riding. The guys be out riding. And people see black people on horses and the horses look so good, they are... Uh, they pull over and ask, where you guys rent them horses at? No. And we, what makes you think we rent them? We don't rent them, we own them. We own them. <laughs> you own them? Yeah, y'all rich. No, we're not rich. We just, we, this is something we do. True story. That's the thing. They're not to see us riding horses and and want to know where we get them from. And they, 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 they are, you know, they, where you rent them at? We don't rent them. We own them. And they, they're shocked. Shocked. They're shocked to say that when we say we own them. True story. Yeah, and uh, like if somebody have a horse, and the guy, the, like the guys from the auction, like the, like uh, certain times of year, people buy the horses. They they uh, they buy the horses from the auction, and then take them like summer when school is out. They have summer camps, and they have horses. And if they see if, if somebody take a horse up there from the city, they say, "Oh, them horses right there from Philadelphia. They ain't scared of nothing." And they're big and fat. <laughs> if they look at them, they see they're big and fat. So they say, that, that "These horses," but they still won't give us. They won't pay us a lot of money for them. They mm. want them on the leg for theirs, but they don't mm. want. Them. And them them yeah. horses ain't broke. Them horses is probably pasture horses. Just been ain't ain't no, been worked, ain't no, been socialized. They, no, the ones they got the one they said they bring up that when when the white man bring them up, they 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 uh give them butte some some kind of painkiller, but nine times out of ten they are lame. Mm. But see, the horses that come from Philadelphia. They are not, they're not lame because we don't know too much about giving them stuff to, to, you know, give them stuff to make them look like they are, you know, like they are sound horses. Mm-hmm. But they sure horses, they do be drugging them, them babies up. Yes, they, they, they sure they do. do. Yeah, we have to look, you, you have to know what you're looking at to know if they've been drugged or not. So you can look mm -hmm. at them and tell the eyes they look glassy. When they when they on when they and they're standing with the head down, you know they ain't that quiet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially at them auctions. Okay, I just have two quick questions. Um, what is your grandson's name, and can you acknowledge him? And uh, just speak about anything that you would like to share about your grandson. Oh man, he's he, he's been with me since he was big enough to walk. Well, he wasn't even walking. I carried him whenever I went. I carried him in my arms. We, we went round horses. And he'd been with me. He's sticking with me. He, he's the one that want to be a trainer. And he's, oh, man, he's, the, he's whatever, I, whatever I need. He did this, he's just there. And he wants to be a trainer. And he gets into it. Right now, he's, he want to be a trainer. So he's an apprentice working Training a horse from at the at the parks racetrack. As a matter of fact, he ran the day, finished fourth. But he wants to be a trainer, and so this is what he's doing. And he's dedicated to. And doing, what is his name? 
his name is Milan Farrell. And, and uh, he's, uh, he's dedicated to train, being the trainer. He wants to be a trainer. And he's getting ready, to, he's studying now so he can train, get his trainer's license. And he's there every morning and he, cause he works at night and he's there every morning. It's 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning at the track training this horse. And uh, he, he's, he's into it. And, and he's, I call him my co-pilot cause we used to go out down south all the time. And he was always with me. And then he learned how to drive. He got his driver license. And then he started helping me drive. Because <laughs> I'm I was all I'm always on the go. Mm, that's beautiful. It's generational. That just really is a generational thing. And you should share that there's so many of so many generations of the Pharrells that are part of it. You, your sons, your grandchildren and great grandchildren. Yeah, I got, they all, all of them, all my, my immediate family, my, my grands, well, my son, he's the one that's running, doing it right now. And uh, my son, and I got daughters, they, they got grand, my great, my got granddaughter, great grandkids. And I'm, and they just passing it down. And they they all want to be a part of it, but there's some some they're not old enough where they come around. And your son it. is 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 managing the organization, helping you manage the organization. Yeah. And what is your son's name? Darren Farrell. Okay. Yeah, he he's uh he's well uh, he's doing most of the work now. I can't man, I'm I'm slowing down. We you always just, you got know. volunteers. We always got somebody by coming there to volunteer to help. That's right. Yeah, clean the stalls and stuff. That's the whole thing about it. We always have volunteers and people, they come there and, well, see, they come there and meet me and sit down and talk to me. They don't want to leave. <laughs> That's how it is. It's that, just, it's that energy. Yeah, they, I get to talking and they, they start listening and they, they, then they start remembering back when they did this and they did that. I've had people come from, one lady came up from from uh, Louisiana, she had a son bring her up, fly her up from Louisiana to come meet me. She wanted to see where the, the, the uh, movie was shot and to meet me. And we sit down and talked, and she had to catch a plane back. I think she missed the plane. Oh Lord! <laughs> <laughs> I had people from California come, and they sit and talk. I said, damn, my, my plane leaves us up. I, I'm not going to make it. So they just sit back down and say, hey, I got to catch another flight now. <laughs> uh, yeah, because these are these are the stories that really fuel our history. You know, we learn a lot. We have learned a lot from history books, but the more important stories come from our elders. So the fact that you're able to sit down with these individuals and share is just, it's a, it's invaluable, you know? Well, let me ask you one last thing. This is a, a, a kind of a silly question. Is it true that people keep their horses in their houses in Philadelphia? Some that, that back in back in the day they did. They, 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 have, a, they have a house and they take care of the horse. We walk them up the step and they put them in the house. Because <laughs> that's they put that. Uh, that was in the movie too. I, yes, I saw. I, I was wondering how accurate that was. It guys keep put his horse in the house, walking right up the steps, go in and the they'd house. be fine in the house. The horse. They'd be, yeah, they'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, they'd be. that's some country shit. I'm sorry, that's yeah. a pure country ass country. But no, you that, know what? That that's city. That's city stuff. It's city stuff. Yeah, I, so I said it's country because I know some people from Louisiana that did that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we were yeah. there. No, no, no. I know some. I know some people from Louisiana that did the same. So it was funny to see that in the movie. I'm like, is that really true? But yes. Put that joker right in the house. 
<laughs> you give him some some feed and water. He don't care. He right like they, there. They, they, but they don't right care there. about the them pooping or nothing. Like you know, you just have to clean it up. Just clean it up, just like if they was in the stall. Yeah. <laughs> that is too funny. And good. They, and they're good to go. <laughs> Horses are adaptable animals. <laughs>